Thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to be here, O oh God, you, to worship here, O oh God. A living spring, Linwood, Philadelphia. Thank you, Father. Thank you for this awesome church. Thank you for this gathering. Thank you, Lord, for this ecclesia. Thank you for this assembly. We are grateful. Lord, we do not take your presence for granted at all. I am grateful to be here, O oh God. And I ask, Lord, that you flow through these lips of clay. Do what you've purposed to do. Use me, Lord, to add to the grace and all that you are doing here at this time, my Father. That, Lord, no one will go back the same. That your purposes will be established in everyone's lives, O oh God. That you will give us clarity, Lord. That you will shift us to the next level, O oh God. That you open our eyes once again to see the deep love that you have for us. And to let us know that all is well and all will be well. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Oh, thank you, Jesus. So I'm to share the Alpha Session um, 11. I'm plugging into that. How can we make the most of the rest of my life? Oh, thank you, Jesus. Romans chapter 12, verses 1 to 2. In the New King James Version. Romans chapter 12, verses 1 to 2. Are we there? Romans 12, 2. Thank you, Lord. In the New King James Version, it says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable will of God. We can't change our past. We've come through COVID in the last two years, right? And though there's maybe still some remnants of it still going on, but we acknowledge that that has happened. We cannot change it. And you cannot change your past. We we'll listen to that awesome testimony of that lady who, who, who at 17 got pregnant and had a very rough, rough life, but acknowledges that she saw the hand of God and continues to see the hand of God. Amen. Amen. And now she's in a beautiful place. She's in an awesome place. Hallelujah. And her seed doesn't have to go through that. Thank you, Jesus. She cannot do anything about her past. She cannot go and rewrite it. Amen. But the future is more, much beautiful than the past. So where you are going is better than where you're coming from. Don't sit staring at the past. Don't sit moaning about the past. Don't sit, um, um, how do I put it, elevating the past. Worshipping the past. Idolizing the past. Even if the past was really good and beautiful, don't idolize it because we're going somewhere. Tell your neighbor you are going somewhere. We can't change the past. We can't undo our mistakes. That testimony was read out because this person acknowledges, owns her mistakes. She's not ashamed to say, this is what I did. This is what happened to me. How many people will come out and say, I got pregnant at 17? Yes, the shame and all of that. But yet, boldly, because even in the midst of the mistakes, in the, even in the midst of all that happened, you see the hand of God. You see, when you know the love of God, you will know God is not judging you. When we know the love of God, and we as believers, we know the love of God. Because Paul said that, I think it's Ephesians 1.16, it says that we may know the length, the depth, the breadth of the love of Christ. This love that passes all understanding. We are still unraveling it. It was demonstrated when he laid down his life on Calvary. He went to the cross and died a shameful death. He laid down his life. When it is personal to you, nothing, nothing will shake you to that point. Because you will know that. God loves you. 
I yesterday first of all me was using the word affirm. I I always say God loves me. I'm steeped in the love of God. I'm soaked in that love. It's not something I just say. It's something I have a revelation of. And we have to catch that revelation. We have to understand for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. We have to understand it. Not just something that we, we just reel out like that. You have to understand that it's personal to you. But yesterday Pastor Fumi was using this word affirm. And I've adopted that, that God affirms you. He affirms me. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter who rejects you. It's not that we should go on in sin, but life happens. Hello? Life happens. Why didn't he shoot her dead? Why didn't he stone her dead at 17 when that happened? When she got pregnant. And she suffered, but through it all, because he says, when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. You will not drown. And even the fire, it will not be kindled upon you. When you see that lady now, I'm sure that she will not look like what she's been through. Tell your neighbor, you won't look like what you've been through. You won't look like what you've been through. Thank you, Jesus. And so this gives us hope and confidence that our tomorrow will be all right. If he's done it for one, he will do it for the other. Hallelujah. And Jesus has done it for us already. All we have to do is to key into it. But he says to us, Paul was saying to the Romans, and of course he's saying to us that we should not be conformed to this world. I would like to read the Romans, trans, um, sorry, the message translation. Romans 12, 2 in the message translation. Or even let's read from verse one. Are we there? Romans 12. Okay, let me read. Romans 12 verse 2 in the message translation. It says, don't become well adjusted to your culture that you fit in without even thinking. Don't be well adjusted to your culture that you fit in without even thinking. The values that don't align with the values of God. Drop them. Praise God. Let me read it from verse 1. It says, here's what I want you to do. Romans 12, verse 1 to 2. Here's what I want you to do. God helping you. Take your everyday ordinary life. You're sleeping, you're eating, you're going to work, you're walking around, and place it before God as an offering. Embracing what God does for you is the best thing you can do for him. Don't become so well adjusted to your culture that you fit into it without even thinking. Instead, fix your orientation, fix your attention on God. And you'll be changed from the inside out. Readily recognize what he wants from you. Quickly respond to it. Unlike the culture around you, always dragging you down to its level of immaturity. God brings the best out of you, develops the well-formed maturity in you. Don't let the culture around you drag you down to its level of immaturity. I was speaking yesterday about someone who made a comment on my social media post. <laughs> I posted... When I landed, when I arrived at Harrisburg, and I just did the, the protocol that picked me up at the airport, I gave her my phone. I said, just, I just want to give a quick, short message. I think it was just not even up to one minute. And I said, landed in Harrisburg. I'll be speaking in Harrisburg, Harrisburg and Philadelphia over the next two days. It's going to be amazing. Join us. You know, just a quick little word. And I posted. And after, I think it was even later in the night, I went to look at the comments. Very exciting comments. Many said, amen, because I said, I trust. I said, I have trust with me that lives will be transformed, right? And people said, amen. Some pray God goes with you. You know, we pray for you. You are blessed. The people will be. But there was this one funny person. <laughs> this very funny person. <laughs> I don't know. I said, this is what, this is why. Muslims have more respect than us Christians. Show off. That was showing off. That was boasting. I looked at it. I was not sad. You know, uh, you know, the person just talked really, you know, what else? I can't remember. You see, I can't remember because I didn't internalize it. Some of you, you remember what your teacher said to you. 
from middle school, high school, okay, primary school, and you are now maybe in your 40s or 50s, but you still remember. And you are carrying that. I can't remember. I can't say verbatim what. But why should I memorize what he wrote? <laughs> that was his opinion. That was, and I left it there. At first I thought, should I delete it? If you use Instagram, you have the power to just delete. Or block the person. So the person will never see your posts. And never comment. What they don't see, they will. Or should I reply? No, I don't even have time. What will I reply? <laughs> what will I reply? You're a fool or all those things. No, 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 no. I left it. I actually wanted to pin the post so everybody would say, but I just left it there. I will not bring myself down to that level of immaturity. I will not. The person will know better tomorrow. Maybe the person doesn't know me, and maybe, maybe it's even too... Even if the person doesn't know me, even maybe I'm also to look at it and check myself again. Am I all of that? Hello? Why can't I be criticized from the point of view of what he saw? Hello? Maybe that's how I came across, but that God knows that was not the intention. I came to work. I came to serve. <laughs> In Harrisburg, I did come to play. Even if I came to play, even if I came to rest, is rest not good? Hello? So do not let things like that affect you. He says, we are seated with Christ far above principalities and powers. Let our hearts always be filled with love. Let us not always go with the culture of this world. The culture of this world is to reply. An eye for an eye. Create a fight right there. But God's culture is to pray for those who you feel have done you bad. And that's God's culture because that enables, gives opportunity for the person or those who don't like you or who are angry with you to later come into the love of Christ. Praise God. It's not even about whether the person knows me or not. When you know the love of God, you will act differently. Praise God. So it's telling us, Values that don't align with God's values, let's leave them out. Because God demonstrated his values to us through Jesus Christ. There's a lot of pressure to fit in these days. To fit into the culture. To look the part. So people will affirm and applaud and approve. But once God approves of us, we are good. Amen. 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 Of course we have to live by... Be, pay attention to the laws of the land, right? It's God first. We must pay attention to the laws of the land and obey the laws and do what is right that is not sinful. Hello? And then we have God's blessing. These are the times that we as Christians will go against the grain. And sometimes it will be tough. And that's why it's important that we are in community. You have someone you can call to pray with you on the phone. You have someone to call. You can call your pastor. You can call your strong friend to encourage you in what you're going through. Thank you, Jesus. It's liberating to be yourself. Tell your neighbor, be yourself. Be yourself. You don't have to change for them. You don't have to change for anyone. Change because God says, be conformed to my word not to their own expectations. Be yourself. God has designed us all differently. He designed us differently. Some are quiet, some are introverts. We did personality tests yesterday. It's to understand ourselves better. So be yourself. Don't let anyone force you to be who you are not. Hallelujah. To think new thoughts, to get new results, we have to think new thoughts. Let's think the way God thinks. Let's think the way Christ thinks. Let's not think the way the average human being thinks. Thank you, Lord. It's liberating to be yourself. And that's something she always says, just be yourself. Just be yourself. Because it's hard to try and be somebody else. You can't. You keep missing it. 
be yourself within the parameters of God's love, within the parameters of God's word. How do we think like Christ? Study the way he thought in the Gospels. Study the way he thought in the Gospels. There won't be enough time to begin to bring out um, example after example or scripture after scripture. But he thought miracles, not obstacles. As I'm saying that, some scriptures are already coming to you. John 6, the miracle of the five loaves and fish. We know that, right? He thought miracles, not obstacles. The disciples thought obstacles. And I'm not here to bash them. Hello? <laughs> but he said, yeah, we was preaching to the people, and the Bible says he was moved with compassion for them because they had been listening to him, you know, from morning till evening. He had been preaching to them, telling them how to live, telling them more about God. And then he said to his disciples that these people, they have been, they must be hungry. Let's find food for them. The disciples were like, oh. <laughs> they must have told themselves. Like when Pastor Fumi says, get this done, I want it done. Some of you be like, oh. not that you are snickering behind her back, but hello. I'm a pastor. Too. Haven't you done it before? I'm a pastor. I'm a pastor's wife. Sometimes when my husband says we should do that, I'm like, okay. It's not sinful, but you're just thinking that, ah, how? Then later you realize that the grace, the grace of God and the power of the Holy Spirit is there to help you to achieve it. Amen. Amen. Let's talk this morning. Am I, I, I think I know a little bit about Pastor Fumi. <laughs> when she was it done, you're thinking, ha. Ah. But then time and time again, you've seen miracles. Through you, things have been accomplished. Right? And then you look back, maybe a conference, maybe something, maybe going to get someone out of their deep mess and all of that. And you look back and you say, we thought we couldn't pull it off, but we did. But that was because someone said, do it. Go do it. I want this from you. I expect, and first you're thinking the standard is so high. So they thought Jesus' standard was very high. And indeed, his standard was high. He said, find food for them. And they're like, this man. Where does he think we, all those things weren't written there. But when you read the Bible, especially the gospel, it's very interesting. You can easily picture the various scenarios, what was going on in their minds, right? And what we are to do, many of us, we can fit ourselves into the disciples. And if I was there, ah, we are going to wonder. Like when God said to Ezekiel, can these bones live? He said, God, you know. <laughs> Why are you asking questions, God? Sometimes it's an exam. Sometimes it's a journey that he's taking us through. Sometimes it's because he wants conversation. He wants conversation. Prayer is a two-way street. You tell him what you want. You also listen to what he wants. Yeah, it's a two-way street. I think many times when he says we should pray, it's because he wants to hear our voice. Not just once in a while. You pray, you get that thing, and then till the next time you need something before he hears your voice. Then sorry to say, he might keep you need. <laughs> if it's because of need, that's the only time we hear his voice. Then he might keep us needy. Can we even go beyond that and say, God, what's on your heart? Yep. Thank you. I got one amen there. <laughs> what is on your heart, Lord? That's how you become a friend of God. That's how you move into the inner circle. How many people like inner circle? In your school, at work, you want to be in the inner circle. The people that know what's happening in the organization. The core people, right? Yes. And that's how it happens. You go to the boss and say, how can I help you, sir? Yes. Or ma'am, what can I do for you? Even beyond your job description. That's how they get there. The boss will say, ah, this one. <laughs> All the time, they're always calling her. They're always calling him. Because you know how to deliver. You know how to serve. You don't just do the minimum. Is there anything else you want done? There are stories. Matthew 25, the... The story of the parable of talents. How that boss, the master, gave out talents to three different people. He was testing them. He was looking for who he was going to promote eventually. To become his partner. Because he said to the one that had five talents and two talents. Eventually he said, well done, good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of your Lord. Another translation said, now you can be my partners. I think it's the J.B. Phillips translation. He said, now you can be my, your partner. The one that had the one talent, and he, he didn't know he was doing himself. So God, Jesus said, 
feed them. And they were like, Master, uh, where, where are we going to find food? There's nothing. Nothing. Scarcity mentality. Jesus always thought abundance. And he always thought miracles. Even though sometimes there may not be physical cash in his pocket. But he always thought possibilities. He want us, wants us to think that way. He thought miracles are not obstacles. Immediately they saw obstacles. Then they saw this boy with five loaves and two fish. You know, and he said, come, come, let's, let's have it. And then he said, to them, okay, this, this is the only thing around us here. And what is this compared to 5,000 people at least to feed? And so he gave thanks right before them. And he said, begin to share it. And as they began to share, it went round. I've seen that this is God's pattern. The widow too that Elijah came to. What do you have? She said, I have nothing. But she had a job. Oh, but she counted it as what? Nothing. That thing you have, don't count it as nothing. It's still something. Don't overlook your gift. Don't say it's small compared to another person's own. That smile, maybe all you have is a smile. You don't have money in your pocket. Use that smile. Some people could do with that smile. Especially in times like this. Some people could do with that smile. In the parking lot, in Walmart, wherever. Somebody can do with that smile. Your smile might heal somebody. And a conversation can start from there. And that person might have the answer to what you're looking for. The link to a form to fill for scholarship. The link to a job or whatever. All because you smiled at someone and you didn't know how heavy their heart was. Don't say what you have is small. And that's what Jesus was trying to teach them. Don't say there's only, only two fish, only only, it's only this subject, I, it's, it's only, um, what's the biology that I understand. I don't like maths, I don't, it's only, that biology will bring you a breakthrough. We should never call small or common what God has given and what God has blessed. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus thought, he also thought love and not hatred. He always thought love. God, help us to love. Help us. Love and hatred. Always love. The children wanted to come to him. The disciples, as good as they were, they blocked them. Hello? Protocol. <laughs> God bless you. <laughs> Protocol people, you do a fantastic job. Protocol people, clap for yourself. Here, back home in our church, everywhere. You do. But please, sometimes, ah, uh ah, -uh, the blocking block them. Jesus said, mm, mm, mm. let them come. Let them come. The disciples were thinking, what are these ones looking for? Ah, when the master is talking to adult people. Are they not people too? <laughs> Jesus didn't even fight with them. He just said, bring those to them. Come, come, come. And he said, if you don't let any of these ones see the kingdom of God, <laughs> it will be bad for you. Those who work with children, God bless you. Children, church teachers, God bless you. They understand the future. Just that all of us can't be there. They understand the future and they understand that it's not immediate reward. It's not immediate. What, what gift can a five-year-old give you? You have to wait till they're like 25. And by then, they may even have forgotten you. But that's the future. Praise God. But again, it's not to hit on anyone because we all have our own callings. We all have the areas, various areas where we are to serve. Right? So if you have a good smile, be one of the ushers. Yeah. Calm down. You understand your assignment. Yours, you know that as they're coming, you don't know what's been happening at home. You don't even know what took them to. You don't even know what took them, what it took to get to church. Whether it's their first time or their seventh time. Or the 70th time coming to church. You don't know what it took. But they understand that if we can begin to break, if we can begin to represent God before the word, even before the worship, they know that it's an assignment, not just to sit people down. Because some people are coming, their hearts are hard. Maybe they were forced to come. So you've prepared their hearts before the word. With what? A smile. Come with me this way. You are affirming them. And you are. Praise God. We all should understand our sermon and never make light. The five loaves and two fishes, they were not too small. Because eventually they fed the whole crowd. Jesus gave thanks. Lord, help me to be a thankful person. 
I'm saying this to myself. I don't know about you. It looks like I'm preaching to myself as well. Lord, help me to be a thankful person. Help me to be a grateful person. We've come through COVID. I'm alive. It's only the one person who's alive that can praise you. Yes, there are many things that I haven't seen done yet. But I'm alive. Help me to be grateful. He's always teaching us gratitude. The world is full of ingratitude. But the kingdom values is gratitude. I, as I speak now, I remember again when he stood before the tomb of Lazarus. What did he do? He gave thanks. Before he called Lazarus forth, he did what he gave thanks. Why did he do that publicly? Because he wanted to teach us that in all things, you give thanks. In dead situations, you give thanks. Does anyone have a situation that seems dead right now? Let's give thanks. Don't just give thanks when you come to church and the praise team and the choir are here to help us to thank God. Sometimes they're like, lift your hands, lift your hands and praise God. We should not be begged. Because if you know what he's done for you, he's done so much for me, I cannot tell it all. When we think we will thank, thank you, Jesus. The person who is in a, just a tiny one-room apartment in a very, very odd part of the city, a very poor part of the city, can be thankful because she can say, I once slept on staircase. Thank you, Lord, for this elevation. Mm. Because you know your journey. You know where you're coming from. But this is the bottom line. Because he put breath in our nostrils. Do you know we have no power to wake ourselves up? I always say that we have, we have the ability to put ourselves to sleep. If you're struggling with sleep, which sometimes I do, you have the power to use some things, some kind of teas like lavender tea and all that. Again, I'm not a doctor, I'm not a health, but this is what I just <laughs> try to get knowledge and help myself in the wellness area. Lavender tea or milk or something that can make you what, relax and calm down, right? Or there are some sleeping tills, mel melatonin and all of those things that will help you to sleep. But how do you wake up? No. Alarm clock? No. Alarm clock. If someone has gone to the beyond, the alarm clock will ring in vain. Do we in our sleep tell ourselves that now I will now wake up? Then you wake up. When we are going to sleep, we put on our nightwear, we say, I want to sleep. You put up the light, if you know all the things, put your cell phone aside, those things that would hinder a good night's sleep. Right? But in terms of wake up, how do you wake up? How do you prepare to wake up? The grace of God. How? How? It's not the alarm clock. Because if you had gone from there in your sleep to the beyond, the alarm clock will ring in vain. And many of us even wake up without alarm clock. We just wonder that we are up at the same time we wake up every. So when I wake up, I first say, thank you, Jesus. Don't let's take it for granted. I'm in the land of the living again today. Thank you, Lord. There is hope. Even that bad situation, because you woke up, then you don't know whether this is the day of the miracle. And you're here today. This is your day for a miracle. You woke up, you're in church, or you're watching by live streaming. This is your day. This is your moment. So Jesus wants us to believe, to think like he thinks. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. He says his ways are not our ways. His ways are higher than our ways. So Lord, please help me. Let me not be limited to this culture. Help me to go higher. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Don't, have, don't be apologetic in being a loving person. Relate with people well. Because Jesus did. He did. And it wasn't always lovey-dovey. There were times he had to give the Pharisees their own hard talk. Hard, <laughs> you know. Because they were leading people astray. Thank you, Lord. Let God use you to change the lives of others. In Mark 10, 42, and this is the last scripture I'll read before I take my seat. Mark chapter 10, verse 42. 
to 45. So we're still talking about how can I make the most of the rest of my life. The Alpha Session 11. Thank you, Jesus. Mark chapter 10, verse 42 to 45 in the New King James Version. He said, but Jesus called them to himself and said to them, you know that there are those who are considered rulers over the Gentiles. They lord it over them. And their great ones exercise authority over them. Yet it shall not be so among you. Whoever desires to become great among you shall be your servant. Whoever of you desires to be the first shall be the servant of all. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a, as a ransom for many. Serve with your heart. Serve with your hands. Serve with your feet. Serve with all you have you will experience life at its best. Because he also says that except a corn of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it abides alone. We should take care of ourselves, but we should also be selfless. Serve God, serve people. That's the way. That's how the master showed us. That's how we can make the best of the rest of our lives. We shouldn't live to ourselves alone. Live to please God and to help people in any way that you can. Thank you, Lord. Live to please God and to help people in any way that you can. Help yourself too because you are included in the people that you are helping. Because it's about balance. Some people think, oh, forget about yourself. Treat yourself harshly and people treat people nicely. No. But we're saying that don't let it be all about you. I, me, and myself. God has need of you. And it's a life that is beautiful. It's a life that is, um, you know, there's a joy you have that you cannot really explain. It's not about people singing your praises. Oh, you did this for me. Thank you. Thank you. You did this for me. No. Sometimes when they thank you is too much, we're like, no, let God bless me. But it's about being relevant and adding to other people's lives. You'll be happy when you make someone else happy. When you fulfill um, something for them in life. You share your lunch with someone. The person is excited that you know I was so hungry. You are happy because you fed that person. It's in the little things first, not in the big things. That's where we start from. I started by going to brothels. Actually, that's not where I started from, but somewhere along the line, I think that's where my ministry started from. Yes. And at that time, I think I was just married like two years. I had a, a child, our first born. She was very young then. My heart used to go out in Lagos then, around Oregon, Ikeja area. My heart used to go out to girls on the streets, to prostitutes. Just like, ah, I just used to wonder, not judge them. I wasn't judging them. See, when you judge them, you abuse them and you pass by. You say, oh, run. sorry, excuse me. That means in my Yoruba dialect, that means, what does that mean? What's so <laughs> nonsense person, useless. Some of us don't say it out, but in our hearts, we've said it. God's creation. Hello? I just used to wonder. That was my own curiosity that, Why? Why would someone be standing by the road selling their bodies? Selling their bodies for what? So my heart used to go out. So finally I found a brothel not too far from us then. I went in casually one afternoon. I think I just wore jeans. I didn't even carry my Bible. So this is like 26 years ago or so. I didn't carry my Bible. Sorry, we didn't have, there were no phones, no no cell phones, no phones. <laughs> we had our, you know, I didn't go in with any Bible. I just went in casually dressed. And I was looking to strike a conversation with any girl I would meet. And God blessed that, that afternoon. He really did. Because as I walked into the walkway, I saw a girl. She said her name was Sandra, but they don't use their real names. So don't, it doesn't matter. I don't know if you're familiar with um, Pak in Nigeria. They call it Face Me, I Face You. Anybody know face me, I face you? So it's this um, small like bungalow buildings, but you have a hallway 
and you have small rooms that open into the hallway and you have the conveniences at the back. There could be like 20 of those rooms. Then you have the kitchen and the bathrooms shared right at the end of the hallway. So I walked into that. I stood at the entrance and I was just waiting. And then this girl came and I told her I was looking for my sister. I greeted her. I said, I'm looking for my sister. I said, hmm, is she tall? Is she fair like you? She was trying to describe someone like me. I said, hmm, not too tall, not too. When I saw that, I could not keep up with the lie. <laughs> Actually, it was not a lie because they are my sisters. We are all connected, right? I then decided to stop somewhere along the line because I thought I would soon be found out. <laughs> I had to some point in time just start talking to her. I said, actually, I'm not looking for anyone in particular. What are you doing here? You're a beautiful girl. I said, to steal her. <laughs> you know, just trying, affirming. That's the word, affirming. So let me use, use the word to I said, affirming her. And before long, she, she listened to me. She leaned on the back of her, the wall beside her, her own room. She leaned back, and I was facing her. And the hallway was like that, right? So as I began to talk to her, this lady came down. This lady came out of a room. I, was, I knew she was going to the hallway because she had a towel on and tied. And I think she had a bucket. And she said, Sandra, now born again. I can't forget those words. That's in pidgin English. It means Sandra. Is that one of those born again people? And Sandra said, no, now my sister. Oh. I can never forget because my heart melted. The lady quickly greeted me. She said, good afternoon. My good. You know, she curtsied and she greeted me and she continued going to the bathroom. I said, Sandra, God bless you. Sandra took me, let me into her room that day. The rest is history because I led her to Christ that day. Amen. I became friends with the rest of them in the brothel. I would come and go. I remember the following Christmas after church then. I just took them this crate of soft drinks, a crate of soft drinks. Then it was still bottled. <laughs> and you have to return the crate. So I said, just take. And a cooler of rice, jollof rice. Take, do Christmas. Keep it for me. I'll come during the week. Keep my crate of bottles. She shared with her friends. I became a regular visitor to them. I didn't know that's what you call friendship evangelism. I just wanted to be their friend. I didn't even know I was doing evangelism. I just... I, my heart was just going towards them. I decided to do something about it. Who is your heart going to? college students those who struggle with a particular subject and you know you're so good you're so good in maths teach your fellow students teach, just just do something about the things you complain about. i could be complaining i could say all oh, these girls are stand by and complain and talk about it from morning till evening let's do something about it you don't like how people dress do something about it maybe you should be the fashion consultant to say, you know what, you can combine this color. I know some people, as I'm here now, they've analyzed how I'm. It's not a sin. That's your area. You've already analyzed. Mm, polka dot pink. Pum, on point. <laughs> it's not a sin. It's not canal. It's okay. When you've done that, just quick focus on the word for now. Mm. And if I didn't dress well, get my number or my contact. I say, I want to be advising you on your outfits. Mm, it was nice, but we can, you can do with some help. <laughs> I, never, I never shy away from those things because I realize I don't know everything. Let other people help you as you also help them. <laughs> don't be shy about what you are concerned about. You may be that person that puts it together really well. Use it to help people. Do it free and also get paid for it. There are some who are ready to be paid Nothing, again, is too small. Tell your neighbor, your gift is not too small to be used to bless someone. Serve with what he has given you. Thank you, Father. We give you praise. We give you glory, Lord. Help us to make the rest, most of the rest of our lives. Help us, Lord. We submit to you our everyday lives. According to Romans 12 verse 1, we submit to you, we give to you our waking up, our journey, our everyday lives, oh God. That you breathe on it and that we'll do what is right, that we'll take every step of each day, Lord. That we will please you. When we get back to our homes every day, we will look back and realize we have pleased you. And if there's any 
time we make a mistake, we fall in the course of the day. We ask for your forgiveness and we move on. And you help us to do better day after day. Because, Lord, these are the times that the world is dark out there. Thank you, Lord. So you will teach us how to shine. You will teach us which way to, to, to go. That each one's journey is different. But you will say, well done, good and faithful servant. That is what you will say over each and every one of us. Help us, oh God, to be touched by what touches you, what breaks your heart, Lord. Help us to, to, to help people who are in need in any way that we can. And help us also, above all, not to neglect you. That first relationship that is vertical. Because we cannot do anything in our own might. Lord, I pray that you keep supplying the grace to every one of us. The grace to hear you. To know we are loved and affirmed. Giving us the strength and the energy to continue in this dark world. Because we are light. And you said, as you are, so are we in this world. So we stay connected to you. We stay connected to the word. Thank you, Father, so that we can grow, so that we can be strengthened, so that we'll not be overwhelmed. Thank you, Father. Help us in the days, in the weeks, and the months ahead, even the years, till Jesus comes again. We will not be found wanting. I pray, Lord, today, and I prophesy, everything or anything that has taken a smile away from your face, be dealt with right now in the name of Jesus. I pray that your joy, joy be restored to you. I pray that your smile be restored in the name of Jesus. Maybe during COVID you suffered depression. Maybe now you've suffered a loss. Maybe things have not yet come together for you. But I declare in Jesus name that the heavens are opened over you. The heavens are opened over you. Smile again. Progress again. Move on in glory. Move on. Move on with the grace and the power of God. Thank you, Lord. Move on. There is work to be done. There is work to be done. Get up. Be that ball of fire. Be that light that he has said. Remember that he said we are the light of the world. Help us to make the best of the rest. Of what is left in the earth, Father. Thank you, Lord. And because of the things that are coming ahead, strengthen us. Individually and together. Thank you, Lord. I declare anyone sick here under the sound of my voice. In obedience to God's word, I did release his word. He said he sent his word, forth his word and he healed them of their diseases. Thank you, Father. You said that as, as Jesus taught, the power of God was present to heal. Receive your healing. Receive your healing. Emotional, physical, whatever area. Receive your healing right now. In the name of Jesus. Don't sit in the past. Move on in the new. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Whatever represents a problem or concern right now. As you connect in faith, it is done. God wants to be he wants to be believed. He says, go, your faith has made you whole. People took what they needed. Even the Syrophoenician woman. She didn't mind that Jesus said, it's given to the dogs. She said, even the dogs eat the crumbs. Great faith. Let faith arise in your heart. God is good. And you will see his goodness in the land of the living. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. And if you haven't given your life to Christ, give your life to Christ. Give your life to Christ today. Amen. I believe today's service has been of great blessing to you. We would like to stay in touch with you. So please connect with us on all our social media platforms at RCCGLSMC on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Please remain blessed and we'll see you next time.